to the lighter side of the dark side. It's your weekly freak show here on Renegade Radio or Steel Waves Radio or uh, iHeart Radio, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, however you're listening to us. It's the Dark Mark Show. I am Dark Mark, the goth comedian. Uh, my co-host, Hannah, everybody's favorite vegan heavy metal DJ. She'll be joining us a little later uh, in the show. She had an emergency phone call, but... Um, I think uh, I, I can't. She can't wait to be on the show because she knows, as everybody does, that green jelly sucks. And uh, even when they were known as green jello, they sucked. But now that they're green jelly and they've got a whole new cast of characters, they really suck. And here's a cast of character. Here's one of the cast of characters now. Fender Stacks. Oh yeah, rock and roll. Fender Stacks. He came in costume, and I really appreciate it. Uh, it's, uh, it, this is, to me, this is just as exciting as when Kiss took off their makeup in, in, at MTV. You put on your makeup. Yeah. Even despite the quarantine. Yeah, despite, despite the quarantine, he put on the makeup. It's like, it's like 90 degrees in LA. The sun's beating down on him. And he, he's got, uh, 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 do you want to stand up now and show everybody, uh, what's going on? The muscles and the, look at that. He's got the he's got a rhino's a dick, and look at that, ladies and gentlemen! Oh my goodness! What an ass! Oh, look at those boots! So my costume was done by Cleve Hall, who actually did costumes for uh, uh, Cleve Hall, former guest of ours. Yeah, Cleve Hall, the man, um, one of my professional contacts through another special effects guy named. Johnny Psycho, Johnny helped me uh, do the boots, um, and Cleve did uh, the foam fabrication, the, the reconstruction of the hair. Um, at the shows, we bring what we call punk rock puppets, which are all made out of foam and duct tape, so you'll see Bert and Ernie and, you know, Shitman. Stone, Shitman. They got yeah, the... every every costumed uh, character you could imagine, both uh, copyrighted by us and copyrighted by other people. Please don't sue us. Um, we never get sued. The three little pigs. They got and your yep. new your new three song little, is they uh... wolf, everybody. So anyway, foam and duct tape is the uh, name of the game, and my original costume was foam and duct tape. It looked terrible. Well, no, you can tell the Cleve Hall's all there. Uh, but Cleve redesigned everything from scratch. You can see that this is all like plastic tubing. Yeah. So everything is uh, much more easy to take on tour because I got to break down the whole costume and I had to make it modular. So it all fit in a suitcase because uh, when it was like uh, foam and duct tape, it was terrible because it would uh, get smashed down and all pulled out of shape and everything and then we would uh pull it out for the show and you're trying to squeeze things and make it get back into the order and uh it was pretty terrible so uh, i approached cleve and asked him if he could uh make it modular and make it break down to where everything would uh fit into a suitcase instead and uh that's exactly what he did it took a while I was but, say, all, uh, the, all the dreads the muscles the 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 uh, rhino cock Oh yeah, yeah, that was that, that was pure. This is this is not molded off of anything. This was straight up free made by Cleve. Like it's all fabricated from nothing. It's not a toy. It's not a you know. It's not molded off of anything. He free sculpted it. So now, nice work, Cleve. <laughs> now uh, I, I I I don't tell Cleve, but. Uh... Have you used that with the uh, with the uh, with the other half, a uh, little rhino action? Oh, uh, you know, you, this rhino gets a lot of action, but mostly it shows. You'd be sh surprised. Oh, I wouldn't uh, be surprised. I'm sure it's like it, it, like it. I mean, it's 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 got the it's got the uh, the cock ring right here, so you know, it stays nice and rigid. I I would imagine, sure. You gotta have a, you, you gotta have a, you gotta have that rigid. This is gonna be a fun interview. Before we get going, I gotta I gotta uh, talk about sponsors really quick. Uh, Audible, if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash DMS for the Dark Mark Show, DMS, audibletrial.com DMS, you get two free books or one free book and one free Audible original. One of the Audible originals they just added 
was a, a reading of The Sandman, written by Neil Gaiman with uh, voices from everybody from James McElroy. I mean, just all, an all-star cast, which I can't wait to listen to. So you get that free. Just type in audibletrial.com forward slash DMS. You get that free. You get a book free and a 30-day trial. And you can cancel any time, and you still keep the book and the Audible original, and you can get whatever you want. They have everything from Shakespeare to smuts. And our, our other sponsor, I know you're a fan of, because I saw a post about it, is Doomie's Home Cooking. Oh, yeah. We have a lot of mutual friends, it seems like. We've got Cleve Hall, and we've got Phil Doomy, who the best vegan food you ever had. Yep, absolutely. What's your favorite Doomie's uh, dish? Um, I think last time I was there, I had HFA. That was really good. Um, I'm from Louisiana originally. Like, oh, really? Okay. So, uh, that's, that's, uh, you it's know, from what? Boys? last time I went to Doomies, I went to the Mexican one. I'm sorry. I apologize. I had a uh, chili relleno. I apologize. You have to apologize for that. I've had it. It's delicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had chili relleno last time I went because I went to the little shop over there off. I don't remember. It's, what it's, it's twelve fifty. It's twelve fifty three Vine Street. Yeah, and it's right next to where the M bar used to be. Uh, it's uh, they have a Mexican restaurant and they have the regular restaurant. Right. Uh, they're doing takeout. I don't know if they're doing outdoor seating, but I know they have takeout for sure. And, There's a couple uh, outdoor seats. Yeah. Yeah. So. Go out there, uh, support them. They also have a, 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 a place in Culver City and one in Toronto, Canada. And I, I speaking, you were from Louisiana last time I was there. I had the uh, the uh, the shrimp po' boy, which was fantastic. So, and don't forget the fun fries. And uh, and I'm, I'm trying to keep this as brief as possible. Uh, if you're listening to this on on, on a podcast catcher, you're watching this on YouTube. I recommend you watch it on YouTube. You got to see the rhino cock, but uh, we have uh, we have links for Hustler Hollywood, where you get twenty percent off and a free gift. You know, so get 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 your sex on. I I I, I usually ask what people's favorite uh, uh, vibrators and or dildos are. I, I guess I can ask you, Fender. What's your favorite dildo? Uh, I guess the Rhino. Uh... Okay. <laughs> I don't know if Hustler's got the Rhino, but I know they've got some interesting shaped things and all. Uh, they, they had a superhero line that was pretty funny. Yeah, and they have that. That on, yeah, they have that online. Get the you know whatever Iron Man cock, whatever you want. <laughs> the Incredible Hulk. I'm sure, and uh, also Spy Associates. We have a twenty percent off uh, every order of two hundred forty nine dollars. A link on our YouTube and our um, and our um, Spotify and other podcast catchers. If you want to spy on somebody, if you want to see if you're being spied on, it's uh, it's some James Bond shit. It's great. And we got so many sponsors; it's ridiculous. We're on two radio stations. We're on. We got so many sponsors. You're drinking Joe Cola, which I don't know where you get that anymore, but uh, good for you. And uh, it's a little Cavassier with the Joe Cola. Is that what's going on? I'm just pouring some Cavassier yeah. by itself. I've got a pretty epic uh, Armagnac and cognac stash and rum and uh, other things. Let's see if I can tilt this. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, uh, there we go. So I got my little three-tiered bar. It's great. It's it's not a show until uh, until uh, guest couches. So, um, but you you have Joe Cola. We're being sponsored by Raise Energy Drinks. R A Z E, and we have a link for fifty percent off your order. Raise Energy Drinks. It's not like the, the the crap you get at the convenience store. This is stuff that's sold in gyms. It's sold at GNC. It, no, zero calories, zero sugar, zero crash, all sorts of amino acids and good things in there. And you get 50% off your, your order. We have a link on the show. So that's it. Uh, that's, uh, that's enough selling out to the corporate, corporate scum. Uh, that's Absolutely. our show, which we love. Hey, we got to pay the bills. Got to pay the bills. The, uh, uh, I really do. Times here. Nobody's that's working. Shut down the whole country, right? Right. So let me uh, let me run down the, the history of green jello slash green jelly real quick. If people don't know, if you're listening, to this, I don't know why they would be watching or listening to the show if they didn't know. But uh, green jello uh, formed. Uh, it was a Bill Mann speaker, 
Bill Manspeaker, the great Bill Manspeaker. The great Bill Manspeaker. Uh, one of the band in one 81. Of the band, uh, in Buffalo, New York, if, if I'm in not. In Buffalo, not. yep. And they were doing lo local shows, and they were uh, obviously a lot of stagecraft, a lot of uh, puppets, wackiness. Uh, people would throw things at them. Apparently, they opened for the Ramones. Uh, reportedly, the worst band to ever open for the Ramones. And that's and that's saying something. I saw the Ramones and their opening band when I saw them was horrible. But uh, so Green Jello was apparently worse than worse than that. Uh, they uh, they moved to Hollywood at some point. And yeah, Bill decided to go on the Gong Show. Oh, that's right. They had the Gong well, Show. Bill came out to do the Gong Show and then okay. just never bothered to go back to Buffalo. I don't blame him. I've been to Buffalo, and my grandmother lives in Niagara Falls, so. Yeah, one too many uh, winters there. I think uh, Bill would uh, testify that the winters there are terrible. No, I. Uh, you know what? You know what else is terrible? I I I I performed at a goth festival, the Convergence Goth Festival, in Buffalo in the summer, and it was the hottest. You expect Buffalo to be to be cold in the summer. It was like 110 degrees, and we're performing at this place. With all a pack of people, no air conditioning. Everybody's in black. Everybody looks like vampires. Yes, I'm in black. I, I ended up. I only packed one pair of shoes, which were my creepers, and I had to wear shorts because it was just too hot with the creepers, and everybody was bagging on my shoes. It was yeah, like, goths in shorts. That's uh, not something yeah. anybody ever wants to see. Oh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's not, it's, not, it's not the greatest look. <laughs> With white socks, by the way. Yeah. So, yeah. So that was, uh, yeah. The uh, the the temperatures go to the extreme in Buffalo, and people did too. So when he gets out here, he puts out some record, and then he eventually puts out the world's first video record. Correct. Um, before that, uh, he he kind of reformed the band once he got to Hollywood. So, oh, so they had a whole new band. Uh, that's when Danny Carey. And Tool. Maynard, James Keenan from Tool, joined the band. They were both in the band. They both performed on the main record as well as a precursor, which we're about to re-release for Record Store Day. It is uh, Triple Live Mother Goose at Budokan. So we've got the uh, original. Oh, wow. It was an indie release. They only made about 225 copies of that album. I've got two or three of them myself. Uh, but uh, there's not a lot of them out there, but we uh, remastered it and repressed it, and it's got the original versions of the Three Little Pigs and quite a few of the other songs that are on Serial Killer, which was the breakthrough album. Right. Three Little Pigs became a, a top, top 20 hit. It's amazing yep. to me in 2020 to think that got played on the radio. Yep. A lot. A lot. It was the song everyone was sick of. Well, I, it, uh, I, I love the song. I'm not sick of it. And when, oh, I I saw you, when I saw you guys at Jelly Fest last year in Whittier, yeah, I was surprised you opened with the song. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we go right, like through the, uh, right for the throat. We don't want to lose anybody's interest. Uh, we start fucking around for too long. They're like, who the fuck are these guys? Right. <laughs> So Bill Bill leaves right with the uh, with the hit single, and then immediately declares that the show is over. Right, and people left. And, and, and then we we said we're just kidding, and then we kept playing, and then uh, you know that'll clear the room eventually. You just uh, people keep left, playing. but most people stayed. Yeah, most people stayed. But uh, it's it's you guys just don't do things uh, the conventional way at all. Yeah, they, you, most people save the good song or the hit song for the last song. You right, know, you're, you're, like, you're, uh, you're, you're risking everybody walking out. That's fine. We keep them engaged. We've got uh, puppets full of uh, diseases and, uh, you know, get them all boozed up and throw them in a mosh pit with Fred. No, I, I was, was going to get to that because of the live show. So, so Serial Col Color comes out. Three World Picks is a huge hit. The band Tool spins off from Green Jello. Yeah, they got. Yellow. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. They got signed because of Green Jello. 
So right. they played the opening show for, or the celebration show for Jello getting signed, and the A and R guys from uh, from Zoo were there, and so they got signed from Bill getting signed. Right, and uh, and and apparently there was a the reason that this record that came out last year, the Tool record, took like fifteen years to make was because Zoo Records was still trying to try, still said that they had the contract on them or something. Yeah, I don't know. There's been a lot of weird legal stuff with with all of that, but Zoo Zoo kind of went under, and then Zoo got uh, their properties bought out, and then yeah, the the music business is crazy. You know, like people buy each other's catalogs and right lay claim to recordings years and years ago that aren't their own, and you know, whatever. And and I, I want to know how long you've been in the music business, uh, and we're gonna get to that, but. So then, so then, Green Jello uh, follows that with the, the three. Oh, by the way, I I love the Serial Killer album. I, I I loved it at the time. I love it now. I because uh, it's just it, there's so so much variety on it. Yeah, and there's three versions of it. Okay, well, I I don't know which version I, I I'm listening it's to. Fine. But... It's the original Green Jello version. Then got sued by Kraft Foods for Serial Killer and and the Jello name brand and. General Mills and everybody else for all the cereal brands that were used in the videos. And uh, they made us pull the video from the VHS at the time and re-release it as Green Jelly without that uh, video. And then we got sued by Metallica, of course. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. For uh, Electric Harley House of Love, which is the song that I always sing for Jello. Right. Uh, I wasn't the original vocalist on that one. Everything was Bill. That's the, that's oh, that, the that was uh, Marshall Stacks. Pretty much that. everything was Bill. My my character was based on Marshall Stacks, and it's because Bill didn't want to wear costumes anymore. Bill pretty much just plays in his underwear. So so Bill was like every one of these characters. Bill was yeah, pretty much. He was Marshall Stacks, and he was he was Marshall Stacks. You know, he's he he, he used to dress up and costumes and all that stuff if you watch the slave boy video which also has maynard in it you'll see bill is marshall stacks and the harley house video is marshall stacks and uh house me teenage rave he's marshall stacks right. and I, was, I was watching the uh, headbangers ball they were interviewing and i was like the you know they had marshall stacks which is you know your character so I didn't know that was Bill dressed up as Marshall Stacks. that is bill dressed up as marshall stacks which is fender stacks as uh brother so, uh, you know, again, uh, it started off with me, Bill, we, me wanting Bill to be Marshall Stacks again and wear a costume and all that. And he's like, no, if you want to do it, you do it. And I'm like, all right. So I get have that character. That character's on all, all the covers and that's anonymous. With Green yeah, Jello you, you've and... got to have a Stacks. Now, out, out on the East Coast, <laughs> we've got uh, Tom Jeffries. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to use this real name. <clears throat> Never mind. His uh, name is Peavy Stacks. So the East Coast, the Buffalo band has Peavy Stacks. Peavy Stacks. Well, that's the thing. And now, LA and Hollywood, we've got Fender Stacks. Well, that's the thing. I, uh, I was going to get to that. When, when you guys came back, now there's 900 members of Green, Je Green well, Jelly. Pretty, pretty much, if you've ever been a member of Green Jello and you didn't physically get kicked out by Bill, you're still a member. So oh, okay. Richard and Danny are technically still members. Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley from Kiss are still members of, of the band. Right. Sebastian Bach and some of the members of Skid Row that have performed with us live. They were officiated as members, and they never quit, never got kicked out. So once again, they're still members. Do you count the audience that dresses up as puppets and goes on stage? No, not really. Okay. I mean, they're in the band for the night. We bring them. I mean, how, how many times do you get to – put on a pig mask and be able to jump around on the on the stage of the whiskey so i mean you're a member of the band while you're on stage right so or even in, or even in whittier which is uh, which i had to convince my drunk friend angie to uh to put on a uh, I don't know which puppet head and and uh and go on stage but she did yep and she, uh, she to had it's uh it, we're not gonna bite you or anything although another drunk pig might knock you over the drum set or something that's possible i guess right and i i had i heard some very creative descriptions of what the smell was like inside uh we do clean them 
I'm kidding. I, uh, I, I've been known to fill up my bathtub and, uh, and soak all the puppets from time to time and things like that. So, uh, really? and we take them to the laundromat and stuff and throw them through. So they do get clean, Lysol, et cetera. But, uh, you know, they, they, some of them have been around for a very long time. And what I would love to, I would love to be in, in the laundromat when somebody's got green jello puppet heads in the dryer. Yeah, we get some strange looks. I can imagine. Because I go in costume. Yeah, do you use like do you use like uh, dryer sheets and <clears throat> um, no, fabric no, softener? No, and... Not really dryer sheets. Although I'm not even sure that we need anything else other than uh, dryer sheets. Can you get pebbles? Um, I'll, I'll show you a little piece of Jello history that uh, we still have for the moment. Although it has been sold, so don't ask me to buy this. Uh. It's not uh, but, uh, I've got a little piece of jello history in my apartment at the moment until we manage to get it to the fan in Sacramento that purchased it. If you look at this, this is the original pebbles head from the anarchy and bedrock right. video. So that's it. That's not in the best shape at this point. You can see that it's, uh, had quite a bit of wear over the years, but it's the original puppet. We haven't remade it or, you know, I'm sure that we've added some more duct tape over the years, but uh, as, as you can see, it's it's fairly worn and that is the original puppet head. So oh, that's, that's, that's coming to a fan in Sacramento very soon, as soon as we can figure out, we would have brought it to them at a show that we were supposed to play, but of course- The virus. The virus, the fucking virus. So, and then that, so that's got to be almost thirty years old. That puppet. Yeah. And, uh, geez, I, so yeah, so uh, so they, how how does green how does green jello? Let's go back to the history. How does green jello follow up or green jelly now? Now that well, uh, phonetically, we still always say green jello. We just write green jelly, really. Oh, because the umlauts turn it into an O. There you go. Okay. So green well, jello. I, I, we don't get mad if you say green jelly, but we say we always say green jello. But then when we have I'm not, I'm, I'm not. Uh, although I'm a fan, I guess I'm not a super fan, so I didn't know. Oh, no, that's fine. I don't expect anybody to be a super fan of green jello. We are fucking terrible. <laughs> You'd be surprised. There's that guy in Sacramento, my friend Angie. I I know a few green je green jello super fans. Oh yeah. Oh, they've got terrible. I know fans. a couple. Yeah. So. Oh, my <laughs> and a bad sense of humor. Well, this is where I'm going because he followed up with the album 333. Yep. Which had, instead of Three Little Pigs, he did The Bear Went Over the Mountain. Yeah, The Bear Song. And that uh, was on the Dumb and Dumber soundtrack. So yeah, that, yeah. it was not as successful as as Serial Killer, but it, it wasn't it wasn't a flop. It, 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 it got no. some play. And yeah, we all uh, the Carnage Rules song, which was used for the uh, Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo video game Maximum Carnage. Right, that's not bad. Fire Man, Venom, and Carnage, all that shit's really hot right now. We're hoping that for Venom 2, they'll use Carnage Rules because Sony does actually have a catalog. That'd be and great. Sony's just putting out Venom 2, and they're going to have Carnage in it. So, cross so fingers. You, you were ahead of uh, Ring Jello once again, ahead of its time. Yep, absolutely. So, so then after three, 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 this is where it gets hazy because we're talking mid nineties now, about ninety five, ninety six. Mm -hmm. There was an album recorded but never released. Is that right? That is correct. And uh, they, the, the the deal with that is, is that um, Yellow had been touring for a couple of years nonstop, mm -hmm. and so when you make enough money on a few albums, as Bill did they will pretty much let you do what you want in Hollywood. So they were like, well, Bill, what do you want to do? He's like, I want to have a production company. So Bill started Green Jello Studios, which was down on Hollywood Boulevard, uh, kind of by the 101 freeway. Bright Green the building. Palladium, right? and, Very uh, close to he did videos, music videos for Marilyn Manson and Kiss, and they did TV shows for VH1. He helped with production on uh, Mr. Show, which was right. a sketch comedy with uh, David Cross Bob Odenkirk Bob Odenkirk and, yeah. Yeah, and David Cross. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they did a lot of the prop work and everything on all of that stuff. In fact, some of the punk rock puppets 
that uh, when we reformed and uh, released uh, music to insult your intelligence by, which was the that missing album that you're talking about that they didn't put out after 333, uh, that is uh, some of the some of the props from Mr. Show were actually what they were using on the tour. Wow. So then Green Jello just sort of, uh, now why didn't they release the music to insult your intelligence by? What happened with that? Oh, man, I don't know how much I'm supposed to tell you. Uh, there was a very- well, Tell me all the inside stuff. There was a very notorious uh, incident that uh, led to that album not being released. And it had to do with uh, legal issues on the part of the person that had the studio that Bill was supposed to sign a contract with. So okay. pretty much the second that Bill was supposed to sign the contract for that one, uh, some allegations came about and uh, they stopped putting out records. Okay. And so this was a studio, this was Zoo Records or this was? Oh, no, no, no. This was, uh, this was another record company, another record label tied to possibly right. the famous person in the world at the time. Hmm. Hmm. It's, uh, it's starting to become clear who that might be. Yeah, allegations and, you know, police raiding ranches and all these types of things. So it, it uh, ended up... And you said uh, you know, Columbia Records owns the catalog. Uh, no, Sony. Sony owns the catalog. That uh, I can think of somebody that would fit that description. That uh, there you go. Sony Records. So anyway, so that and, all that stuff happened, and so the uh, the album ended up getting shipped. So, so they uh, so they told years the later, to Bill decided and, to. Uh, uh, they told the album to beat it, and um, yeah. No way rocked with you or anything yeah. like that. And uh, we didn't get to we didn't get to thrill anybody with that one. To thrill anybody and yeah. I it was sus. You you could have been starting something, but I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, but I guess if if you're gonna if your record's not gonna come out, it would take somebody that was the biggest pop, maybe some would say a king of pop, yeah. to stop it. Yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, again, you know, it's uh, it's uh, bad timing is what it was. Just yes. bad timing. If it would have right. been two weeks later, then right. we probably would have been fine, or at least uh, Bill would have probably gotten an advance check, even if they still wouldn't put out the album. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, it's well. uh, it's hard to look in the crystal ball and really say what would have happened, but uh, that was that was where everything was at the time. Never and black so, and white. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So Bill was uh, was busy. He uh, he and uh, Claude, which is uh, Kim O'Donnell, which was the blonde chick that was in the band at the time, had a kid, Damien. And uh, so Bill was running production companies and had Damien and was raising his family and all of those types of things and uh, production company. And then eventually Bill uh, became part of a club in L.A. Uh, called Qtopia. And so that's what he was doing right. for quite a while. And uh, hmm. actually, Damien wanted Bill to restart the band for Damien's birthday. Damien turned 13, and he said, for, for the, my birthday party, I want Green Jello to play. And wow, so that's, that's, pulled the, that's adorable. Uh, yeah, Bill pulled the band back together, and he was still had Q at the time. Right. And so uh, if, you, uh, if you go on YouTube, you can look up a song called Cookie which was a parody of a Limp Biscuit song. Right. Uh, and so Cookie was shot outside of, uh, outside of Qtopia. Okay. I, so the I, band was I, thought, semi I thought I saw it all, but yeah. During those years, the band was semi-active and played a few shows and, and such. And then uh, Bill signed a deal with somebody to put out music to insult your intelligence by, and he pulled together a band, including... Uh, Aaron from Radioactive Chicken Heads and mm -hmm. a few other notable people. And they uh, toured, played, uh, what do you call it? My mind's blanking on me. The Gathering of the Juggalos? I know you guys have played that. Oh, yeah. We played with, uh, we played uh, the Gathering of the Juggalos. We, we just toured with ICP in October. That was insane. 
that so to speak. Mm. What, 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 Absolutely. What, made that, what, what is that like? I mean, what was the most insane thing that happened on the show, on tour? Uh, the most insane thing to me, uh, a, a biker ripped my nipple off my costume and I almost got in a fight uh, with, you know, a bar full of bikers, which, you know, if you hit one of them, it's not going to go well. So that was awesome. You and ICP are playing a bar full of bikers. Yeah. Were there people with clown, clown makeup on too? Yeah. So it's like half clown makeup, half bikers. I guess the bikers were the regulars of the bar and the juggalos all crashed. And I got to say, the juggalos are probably the nicest group of people, though, ever. Probably the most misunderstood group. Uh, people think that, uh, I don't know what people think. I've heard lots of negative things about juggalos. And I, I've got to tell you that every experience I've ever had uh, has been nothing but positive. And the Juggalos did did nothing but have fun, and uh, it was very positive. It was the other people that were on the tour, such as, and I'm pretty sure a 50-something-year-old biker is not a Juggalo. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I, I've had the same experience with Juggalos, but I, I've just uh, – I, I had a similar experience uh, myself. I did a show at a biker bar in San Diego, but it was uh, it was an all-black show. So yep. it was like all-black comics. I was the only white comic. And they had, you know, a bunch of well-dressed uh, black people and a bunch of bikers, and two fights broke out during my set, so I can, I can sympathize. Yeah. But uh, so so, it was two thousand eight, two thousand nine that things really started rolling. Or yeah, that's well, that's yeah. when the band got back together, and then Bill rolled with the tour bus and standard uh, standard touring uh, for a while, and then uh, he kind of had an epiphany and he realized that he really didn't need it yeah and so in 2012 bill kicked everybody out of the band except himself like he got rid of the touring band okay and then he started setting up band members in different areas all around the country and mexico and canada and so bill would fly out bill would meet up with the band there bill would play three shows and then bill would fly home and everybody had a great time and that's it so if you live in buffalo it's always the same green jello if you live in houston it's always the same green jello but they're not the same green jello right and la is a whole different green jello la is a whole different green jello except for the tour so there's a few of us such as me captain ray which is ray earls uh he's on the duct tape captain suit you know um, right you see him in hollywood and all those he tours and goes out and play shows uh i go out and fly out and play shows other places chicago texas okay. Louisiana, wherever me and bill will fly out we'll meet up with the texas band then we'll go on tour down there and then me and bill will fly home and uh pb stacks uh goes canada etc Lazy D, and if you don't know who Lazy D is, uh, it's our affiliated band, Lazy Ass Destroyer. And Lazy D and Lazy D, I, and Bill are kind of the vocals when we're playing those shows. Right. So Lazy D and I, I'm not a lead singer. I'm a hype man. Yeah, you're like the Flavor Flav front man. So speak. Yeah, like... Uh, that that's that's why my my solo album's named uh, All Show No Talent because uh, we don't really claim to be the best, just claim to be entertaining. If that makes sense. Sorry about that. You're good, kid. I had to plug my computer back in. Sorry about that. Um, it was run out of batteries. It would be bad if it just blanked out. Yeah. So. Well, that, that, that begs the question, how did you meet Bill Manspeaker? I met Bill Manspeaker from going to shows, and then it turned out that I lived right by him. Okay. And, and so, were, you, were you a green uh, Jello fan? I was, a, I was a green Jello super fan. Bill was amazed at how much green Jello trivia I actually knew, yeah. considering, you know, I mean, that, that's the thing. It's like uh, the Green Jello fans that are old school Green Jello fans like myself, you really had to know your shit because the internet was not where the internet is now right. to 
know all the stuff. You you actually had to read magazines and you know talk to people, which helped the mystique though. Yeah, nobody knew that Bill was Marshall Stacks, and you right. did, but I didn't. Exactly. That's the that's the thing. It's a there's a whole air of mystery, and there's a lot of green jello myths that some of them aren't even true but bill doesn't really dispel them because it all adds to the mystique well, what, what, well give me an example of a myth what's a myth that uh people believe that's not true i don't know if i should i don't know if i should uh out a myth actually um, well, what's a myth that I'll, give you, I'll give i'll give you one that's really minor how's that okay uh, the, it, it has been told and retold that uh when the uh I think it was Triple Live came out that they hung all the, the records in a tree and you had to climb the tree to get the record. Hmm. Not true. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of people that were guest stars on the album that were rumored to be guest stars on the album and uh, weren't actually necessarily involved with the project. And then uh, I think everybody thinks that the Maynard being in the band is a myth, but if you read his autobiography, he does verify it. He's no, actually it, the one that goes, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Yeah, I mean, that's that, that's very, and they even, uh, Green Jello, uh, even uh, when they tool played the Greek theater, there's uh, footage of right. them doing yeah, Three Little Pigs. Uh, no, uh, Maynard, Maynard, Maynard and uh, Danny, they Danny. don't deny it. The only reason Maynard knows Danny is because they used to be at the Green Jello loft, uh, and Danny uh, lived right beside it. And Maynard and Danny used to uh, get baseball bats and go clear the bums out of the alley. That's probably not the uh, nicest thing to say, or it's probably not politically correct or whatever at this point. Well, you well, know, it was the 90s, they were bums, now they're homeless. But... Uh, people were always just hanging out in the alley and passing out and you know, camping and just being a nuisance and being loud and shit, and they would go out and clear the bums out of, out from behind the buildings and stuff. Yeah, well, you know, before before they ever were musically involved, they were involved in uh, potential violence. Yeah, well, I was going to say if uh, if tool doesn't work out, you know, there's plenty uh, there's plenty of work out in Hollywood. So, uh, oh yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I would imagine where that loft is, it's uh, they, uh, they, they've come back. And yeah, I think homeless. there's a hydroponics place there now. Uh, Bill's had the building a couple times. It's burned down twice. And then finally, Bill uh, got into a disagreement with the owner where he uh, we don't think he'll rent it to Bill again. So it's, it's okay, though. Right. So how did you meet Bill? Uh, just going to shows and talking to him, and then I ended up hanging out with other Jello members, and then hanging out with Bill. And Bill only lives ten minutes away from me, and so uh, I had told Bill initially that uh, if he ever needed a ride, to hit me up. And of course, uh, something happened, and he needed a ride, and he hit me up, and then we started hanging out, and then we hung out more, and then became inseparable. And then if you hang out long enough, Bill will find a use for you. So. Okay. So when did he find? When did he find? Well, were, you were doing music at the time, though, yourself, right? No, no. What were Not you doing at, at the time? Besides mm. like Cavassier, I've been uh, I've been involved with music for a very long time, but uh, not usually really performing. Okay. Uh, I was I, I used to run a music magazine back in Louisiana before okay. I left uh, for greener pastures and stuff. So I was very involved with uh, putting together shows and promoting shows and, uh, you know, doing photography at shows and reporting on shows and things like that. Uh, but then that's uh, I, when I, when I moved away from Louisiana, I kind of stopped doing music stuff at all. Was that New Orleans or where, where, what part of Louisiana you're from? Uh, I was, I, I, I was from Shreveport, which is pretty much like the South Detroit. Right, no, I, I I've been to Shreveport. I, I get I'm it. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I I I got out. It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's a vortex. It tries to pull you back in. It's uh, especially yeah. you got family there. Can I ask my friend John about that one? Ugh. Well, I can imagine. Yeah, John will set me straight. So, so you were a photojournalist, and uh, you know the kids today they don't understand. There was a time you couldn't take a picture at a concert. Yeah. So you had to rely on the magazines, right? See what these guys look like, and and to see them in action. And you now everybody's on. 
videographer with the cell phone. Yeah. Now people don't even watch the concert. They're just sitting there with the phone, just uh, uh yep. watching the and, phone. And, like. Which, which I will confess, I did and got some three little pigs and put it on Instagram. But yeah, uh, yeah. I it, it, it but but back in the day, you, you had the, you had to realize. So, so when did when was the magic moment, the fateful moment when Bill said, "I, I want you to be in in, in Green Jello." Jesus Christ, I don't even know, man, because uh, the, 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 the transition was very gradual because uh, originally I was just, you know, kind of helping Rhodey and uh, doing what they call punk rock puppet wrangling, where you, right. pull, you know, bring the puppets and, you know, when Bill calls people up, you get them in costume and then, you know, push them out onto the stage, sometimes forcefully and all of those types of things. Yeah, if you if you go see Green Jello Live, which I recommend, like yeah. I said, I went, I had, a, I had a great time. They they get like twenty people off uh, out of the crowd. They put them backstage, put puppets on, put puppet heads on them, and then they have a mosh pit. They put they're on stage, and then they have a mosh pit with with the puppet heads on. It's great. And sometimes the mosh pit is on the stage. Yeah, yeah. So so it's so it's great. And uh, like I say, I got my friend to do it, and she she had a great she had a great time, and she was. Oh, yeah, she was she was she was pretty drunk anyway. Now, now she um, she has a lovely uh, lovely baby boy, and she's uh, settled in some motherhood. So I don't know no. if she'll be doing that again. But uh, the um, so so you were public wrangling, and you were just kind of doing things on the periphery. Yeah, uh, how I've been, been doing the Fender Stacks thing for a few years now. Okay, but not like uh, a decade. So oh, really? Okay. So, because because uh, Reed Jello really kind of returns uh, touring, they really got they really got uh, notoriety, oddly enough, from World Star Hip Hop. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that <laughs> incident. Because <laughs> Bill apparently uh, did a show in in Canada, and I'm assuming that the uh, uh, PB Stacks was on that show, but uh, yeah, uh, they didn't pay him. Yeah, the uh, it, it it went beyond not paying them, and and here's here, here's why that that spiraled out of control. Um, the reason that that happened is because the promoter uh, had you're you're supposed to pay a deposit, right, and then you're supposed to pay the other half at the show. Yes. So, one of the other members of the band. Uh, sent Bill the deposit, and then the guy that the promoter never gave the deposit to that member. Oh, okay. And then at the show, the venue had fronted the guy some money for to make change and shit at the door. And he took all the money at the door. Right. And all the change that the guy, the owner had given him and ducked out. Right. So not only did he not pay the back half, he didn't pay the front half. He took all the door money and he took all the money for, which was a couple hundred dollars in twenties or mm -hmm. in fives and tens and, uh, and took all the fronting money and the ticket money and the money that he was supposed to pay for the show and just dipped out. And you know, with some bands, maybe you can get away with that, but not Green Jello. Well, it would have it would have been fine. In fact, uh, Bill Bill initially said, "You know what? It's not worth it." And then he found out that Rob had fronted the money, and right. the guy paid the front half. Because if it would have just been the back half, Bill was like, "I ah, don't worry about it." But then he found out that if he did that, that Rob would have been out the five hundred or whatever. I don't remember what the deposit was, but he would have been out hundreds of dollars. Mm -hmm. from the front half that he had right. already given Bill, and then he didn't get that either. So, so then they just decided, they talked to a, somebody that knew where the guy lived, and then uh, they went to his house and started banging on the door, and Bill live-streamed it, and uh, there you go. Look it up. Oh, it's, it's on YouTube. It's great. Yep. And, uh, it, and you know, when World Star Hip Hop uh, picked something like that up, uh, that's it went viral, and it was it was such a big hit. Now, that was that what uh, – was that the impetus of uh, Caroline's Records uh, signing you guys? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, like... Couldn't hurt, it, but... 
we, we had talked to a few people uh, and uh, there's a, a promoter uh, named Patrick, I don't know, Patrick Lugo, but uh, he, uh, he actually put us together with uh, Cleopatra. We'd been recording songs with different. I said Caroline, it's Cleopatra, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's Cleopatra, it's fine. Uh, so we'd been recording some different songs with different uh, bands uh, from, you know, the, the different areas, you know, and uh, different people had collaborated on songs uh, and uh, with the intent of eventually putting them all on an album. So we already had some songs. And then uh, we signed with Cleopatra and then brought those songs that we had over and then they wanted more. So then we recorded more. So I recorded, I wrote a, I wrote a song with Larry uh, Reagans and uh, Captain Ray from the Hollywood band it's called okay. And the Show Goes On. So, so hopefully that will be on there. That's the, uh, that's the beauty of working with the record company is that uh, you don't have absolute control over what gets on the record and what doesn't. Really? Because I don't know. I've never, I mean, I've, I put out a couple of comedy albums, but uh, well, there's uh, there's a lot of moving on. parts. So when you're putting out albums on vinyl, for example, so the collector's market, a lot of the collector's market is now vinyl, and vinyl records don't hold as much as what a CD will hold. Right. So you end up having to look at because we had like 14, 15 songs. We don't put out a, a eight song record and call it a day. We give you more crap than what you wanted. Right. Well, that's, that's always been the case. But then, but then only so much will fit on a record. So they got to kind of pick and choose among the approved songs as to what's going to be on the record. And if they're going to release some digitally or I don't know, there may be a CD with bonus tracks or something. We'll see. Right. So the standard in music was like in the seventies when vinyl was, it, it was like 40 minutes, 45 yep. minutes. Then when right. CD hit, everybody's doing 75, 80 minute albums. Right. Everybody wants to maximize the amounts. And now it's back to 45, 40 minutes. Yep. It's so weird. It's, it's I, I, I don't know how, I, I don't know how anybody gets paid. I don't know how any record company stays in business now. Uh, it's uh, well, there's a lot, of, a lot to it. You got your streaming, you've got your, you know, iTunes, digital sales and stuff. But, uh, and then of course you've got your record vinyl collector market. Uh, not a lot of people buy CDs anymore. I still do occasionally. If, uh, right. like when Static X put out their recent record, I pre-ordered a, you know, autographed CD copy. So. That's good. The and boys did not disappoint. I will say that also. Tony Campos and the boys did not disappoint. So. Was good? Yeah. Uh, I've heard a couple songs. They, they sound really good. Yep. But, uh, so. So you, so you, uh, so. Uh, when did uh, the Silence of the Sponge, when did that, uh, where does that fit in? Silence of the Sponge is uh, one of the songs that was released independently and will probably also be on the new record, which is Garbage Band Kids. So uh, they may do a remix of it or something. I don't know. Uh, we did actually produce the record and uh, we've got uh, a guy named Aaron producing the record and he mixed all the songs and all that. So he's got kind of a definitive sound to the album and such. The, um, the video came out and uh, last year, I think. And, yeah. And yeah. It's, 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 it's so, you know, it's SpongeBob's a serial killer, apparently. Yes. Uh, messing with the cartoon characters as is the green, yellow way. I think SpongeBob, the, ser the, the cartoon character actually is a serial killer. They just don't show those scenes. Right, right, right. It's a selective editing. But uh, so, uh, so, um, now, like I say, you've been out on some crazy tours, doing some crazy yes. things. What are, what are some of the, uh, the craziest thing you've seen live? Uh, the besides, crazy... besides bikers uh, trying to, you know, suck on your nipples, things like that. But I mean, um, crowd, I mean who goes, who is the green, who goes to these green jello shows now? Uh, a, a ton of people, you know, you'd be surprised. Like I'm always shocked at the people that are seeing us for the first time. Yeah. And it's like, how did you even know to go to this show? You know, like if you, uh, oh, I've never heard you guys before today. It's like, you guys are amazing. 
that's great. Uh, the Juggalos, like I said, a lot of them weren't Jello fans to begin with. Yeah, I can see you converting. Yeah, I can see you converting. I can see you converting ICP fans. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I mean, when you did the gathering, uh, I I've heard some things. I've had a couple of guests, and I I I personally wanted to play the gathering and uh, been been in contact with them a little bit, but. Um, I've heard it's just it's just the, the most fun time. It, it it is. It still can be hazardous. Uh, Bobcat Goldlake told me that somebody threw a chainsaw at him. Okay. Well, <laughs> I didn't know Bobcat Goldthwait played the Gathering of the Juggalos. I uh, uh, I guess so. He must he must have needed uh, needed some money pretty bad, I guess. I don't know. Or maybe catch yeah. back up with him. See what he's up to now. I don't know him. Uh, I don't know. Just you, you end up if you live in Hollywood, you end up meeting strange people. That's what people tell me. Yeah, I uh, and I guess I have. I just uh, I saw Bobcat go through once in the supermarket. I didn't recognize him. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I, I this is I mean this is probably ten years ago. I didn't know he cut his hair and he was yeah. he's a lot skinnier than he was and yeah. And I was like, oh, that's Bobcat Goldthwait. I'm like, really? It's it's so weird. But, uh, but you, now that you've been in Green Jello, you have your own musical career that you're working on. Yeah, uh, I'm recording a terrible solo album called uh, All Show No Talent. It's uh, filthy parodies, well, filthy metal parodies of 70s rock songs. Okay, so kind of a, a trying to think, a, a blowfly sort of for the 21st century. Yeah, really, really dirty though. So not, how dirty? For the, not for the easily offended. So, so give, give me an example of how dirty. We encourage profanity, please. Gross us out. Uh, let's see. Um, I do. I'm doing a cover of uh, "Dirty Deeds" by AC/DC, but mine is "Dirty Deeds Under Sheets," uh, and uh, it kind of goes sideways from there. It's uh, it's pretty. I can only imagine. Yeah, uh, if you join my Fender Stacks group on Facebook, uh, I've posted a few videos of uh, live performances of stuff. Uh, I actually go to the Viper Room when the for Rockaholic uh, Karaoke with, right. uh, with 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 Scum Love, with Scum and and the boys there. Yep. And uh, yeah, so I mean, I've played a few Fender Stacks songs live with them with them before. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I, I'll, I I just joined the group, so I'll have to check out the videos. But yeah, I mean, good. how hot does it get on stage with all that stuff on there? It's got to be. It's really, really hot. Like it's really hot with the lights and everything else. Like I'm literally like it's like somebody poured a bucket of water over me after I get off stage. Even though you got the master Cleve Hall did it, and I'm sure he made it as breathable as possible. But still. yeah, but I mean, like the, like the pants that I've got don't have. Like their chaps, their the back of the pants is cut out, right. just so I get some skin exposed to the air, because uh, otherwise I'd probably just pass out. And uh, I just uh, I just want to want to know uh, since there's you said there's 900 members of Green Jello, how many shipmen are there? Uh, in my mind, there's only one shipman, and it's not a man. It's uh, Cheryl Mustaine. Cheryl always brings the best shit man mask ever. You can look her up. Wait she's a second. The, so you're telling me she's shit the one man that had a mask on the cover of Green Jello Sucks Live, the album, the soundtrack. Right. So uh, I don't know. She she always has the best shit man. Wait, this is like when I found out Bart Simpson was voiced by a woman. You're telling me shit man's a woman too? Uh, the best shit man is a woman, yeah. Oh, Shout wow. out to Cheryl Mustaine. And people don't know what we're talking about. Shitman is a uh, green jello character and song. Yep. And uh, it, it, and it's funny because uh, when you uh, when you look up green jello on YouTube, not only does it have you know people look up shitman, but people are looking up poo poo man. Yeah, poo poo. Yeah. I've got poo poo on my shoe. I've got poo poo on my shoe. It's poo 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 poo. So this has got to be. I mean, you guys are just. You guys are just getting things ramped up, and then this this fucking virus. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like my album was almost done. We were out on tour. Uh, we were on tour in Wisconsin and Minnesota, 
uh, and we're still playing packed houses. And then we come back home to California because they shut the country down. Right. And then had a hard time getting home. Oh, okay. I can imagine. So you were, you were on tour when they, uh, were you, how, how long were you uh, in the Midwest? Uh, you couldn't get a flight? Were you there stranded there for weeks or? Yeah, no, we were there for about a week, but still it was very, you know, we're playing sold out shows and then it's like everything came to a screeching halt. That sucks. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it, this was going to be the big green jello renaissance. 2020 was going to be the, the yeah, year of jello. Well, would have been, but uh, we'll see. I mean, we had the re-release coming out. We have Garbage Band Kids coming out, and I had my solo album coming out, and then all of a sudden everything is uh, thrown into uncertainty, and people are telling me, well, I don't know if live shows are going to come back. I'm like, yeah, live shows are going to come back. Dude. Like, they're, they're going to have to. Right. They're not going to cut so for, down. For people's sanity sake. Yeah. So, I mean... And the Garbage Band Kids is obviously a takeoff of Garbage Pail Kids. Yes, yes. We were actually supposed to have one of the artists for Garbage Pail Kids do the artwork, but there was some issue that they decided that they weren't going to. So I think that we've got a lot of different artists that are contributing artwork for the Garbage Band Kids songs. And, and uh, I would suggest, and I'm sure you've probably thought about it, uh, trading cards... Yeah, well, I already had a set of trading cards that I designed that we still haven't put out yet for all the different members and, uh, you know, from all, all over Jello kind. So we'll see. Well, I got to tell you, if, if I, 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 where does the time go? I can't believe it's already been an hour. Well, I just had a great time. I've got, I, I, I have definitely want to have you one. back. There's a lot of crap in there, I think. <laughs> we, we, I think we, we, we fit a lot of Jello stuff in there. And, yeah. uh, but, uh, I, uh, I, I definitely, I, I can't wait for live performance to come back and I can't wait to see Green Jello live again because you, I got to tell you, you guys put on a great show. Three little pigs, you think it's over, but it's just begun. Yep, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I mean, just, uh, you know, I've been uh, listening to Green Jello all week. I'm, I'm going insane. Um, my, my, my favorite laugh out loud moment in Green, in, uh, green Jello is when Bill is Marshall Stacks and the uh, House Me Teenage Ray video where they do the parody of uh, American Bandstand. Everybody's like, it's a great beat. You can dance to it. Too bad the band sucks. Yeah, absolutely. And then they bring two guys up and he's like, yeah, hey, buddy, I'll see you after the show. Just fucking crazy. Exactly. The guy's like. <laughs> Cracks me up every time. With the wrench. Oh. And the thing is, the, the, the songs, they're ridiculous. They're stupid. They're children's songs, but they're played so well. Uh, I know the Green Jello sucks, and I know Primus. Did Primus steal that from Green Jello? They had to. I don't know. Because that's their, their thing, too, is Primus sucks, and Green yeah. Jello sucks had to predate that, right? Well, Green Jello sucks. The, the original version of the Green Jello theme song was on our 1984 EP called right. Let It Be. So the Green Jello Sucks thing started because Bill was playing. He went to Kenmore West and they played Kenmore East, which was the rival uh, high school. Right. And so everybody was chanting Green Jello Sucks, Green Jello Sucks. Right. Unless you, unless you think, think that they did well in the gong show, they got gong pretty quickly. They got gong pretty quick. But it was like the, it's a gong show with people you've never heard of. It's not the Chuck Bears, it's some other guy. Oh, you know, I've got one other little thing I can share with you before. Oh, yeah, please. So, um, before Bill left Buffalo, he did record one more album. Uh, it was called Puppet Music. Now, he does mention this on Green Jello Sucks Live, which is the documentary. You can watch that on Amazon uh, Prime. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't already. But uh, he mentioned it briefly on there that uh, that album was recorded. It's called Puppet Music. It had the original version of Obey the Cow God, the original version of Rock and Roll Pumpkin, and uh, some other covers and things like that. And they recorded it, never had the money to put it out. 
then Bill did the gong show, came out to Hollywood, then reformed the band, and they just never put it out. We found the album. Wow. So, so Bill, Bill knew he had it somewhere, but he didn't really know where. So me and Bill were digging through a storage unit, and I did find the album. So at some point in the near future, we will release the missing album, which was recorded, I think, in 85. Wow. Includes two rap songs, which is surprising. Well. Potato rap and root and rap, I think. I don't know. So uh, yeah. there's a couple of rap songs on there, a couple covers, uh, and then just more green jello madness that nobody's heard but me and Bill. Right. You don't think the musicianship is good in green jello? I think it is. I think it's always been. Uh. We've recruited some really good guitarists and players and such to play. Um, but, yeah, there's, there's no real talent there. Okay. Well, I'll take your word for it. I mean, you know, I, I, and, and you're concluding yourself in that, so there you go. I, as I said, I'll show no talent, my friend. I'm a hype man. I'm not a lead singer. Right. So it's okay. Well, hype man, I've, 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 had, a, I've had a blast this last hour. I guess uh, uh, Hannah – uh, Hannah's gonna be so 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 sorry she missed this, but uh, she you know she's dealing with some medical issues with her grandfather. That's so. okay. I I will be playing my own solo shows as soon as live shows get up and running again. So I'll be playing some Jello as, songs and our solo stuff and all that. So uh, as Fender Stacks or as Fender Stacks, Fender Stacks of Green Jello. I've actually got my own full band separate from Jello and the whole nine yards. With Bill's blessing. With Bill's blessing, yeah. In fact, I, I talked to Bill about it, and I was like, yeah, I was going to put uh, green uh, fender stacks and green yellow was going to be the working <laughs> time. And uh, he's yeah. like, you really probably should put of green jello so they know that it's really you. I was like, okay. That's great. <laughs> okay. Well, Fender, uh, how, can, uh, how can all these morons who, uh, who, who like green jello and think they're actually good like myself, even though they suck, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, or whatever. I always answer my own messages. So if they message me, I'll message them back. That's uh, Fender Stacks with two X's on the end. As soon as people book. So. That's Fender Stacks with two X's on the end. Yep. Why was it number three X's? Or, nope, two X's. Too obvious to have the three X's or, or not? No, it's, uh, the, the album's got three X's, but my name's only two. All right. Well, I'm um, tell your wife I'm sorry to hear that. Anyway, Fender, it's been a great. I've had fun. I would definitely want to have when 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 live performance is back. I want to see you solo. I want to see Green Jello. I definitely want to have you back. All right. Absolutely. Maybe yeah. we'll bring some more members of the band next time. Oh please, yeah. I would love to talk to everybody and uh, yep. and uh, you know uh, say hi to shit man. Say hi to. Uh, the cow god, say hi to say hi to, to Bill and everybody there. Yep. Hi Bill. Hi Lazy D. Hi Cheryl. And uh, and uh, everybody, uh, Goth Comedian on all social media. Everybody have a wonderfully creepy week. Bye. All right, take it easy, guys. Rock and roll. <laughs>